what it is, man. This is the green room. D and Mr. Gemini on the mic in a warm up to a show about nothing. And there we are. I <laughs> love how that happens. Welcome to the green room. Dude, my timing is impeccable, bro. We are here to test our equipment. <laughs> Testies. Test- Testies. <laughs> one, two. Dude, that was from like series one, yo. Three. Is that Testies? <laughs> I mean, technically that's from Beavis and Butthead, but you know. Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Gemini. Uh, Philly D. Clickety clack, a fact check of Miss JD. Word and we in the house getting ready to do our ITY special, which if you want to hang out and check out that on uh, Wednesday nights, directions and music, the uh, directions and music dot org, directions and music dot org. Uh, I mean, yeah, if they, yeah, if you want to watch, if you want to, you know, the live, yeah, or, the, the live, yeah, that we do it's live, live. Uh, eight p.m. to nine p.m. Uh, Wednesday nights, directions and music dot org. And if you want to keep the conversation going, right, you can hit us up at itydirectionsandmusic.org or individually at G-E-M-I-N-I at directionsandmusic.org. Dude, the I and I almost sounds like I and I's. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, that's pretty funny. So I'm just going to do this. Are you going to introduce uh, or do your... You're going to do me? I mean, because you could also reach you. At, at... Yeah, you always give me the D on that one. What are you doing, bro? Well, are we ready to open it? Are you opening Johnson's underwear? <laughs> <laughs> type two. <laughs> type two. <laughs> um, whoa. I thought you, thought you said it wasn't going to have too much well, it's pop. Not, it's not under pressure. So just. <laughs> Sorry. But it is It is pretty pretty well carbonated. So You're pretty well carbonated. But yeah, for you at home, because you can't see this, Jim right, and I so brought in his round two of Johnson's underwear. So I changed up the hop profile, like the hop whatever you call it, the, the additions that I used. I, so if anybody cares, <laughs> uh, Ch- Chinook for bittering. Um, it, like Centennial and Columbus. Ohio? Both for, um, for flavor. Why are you giving me the bottle? Why am I giving you the bottle? Do you, I, do you have more? It doesn't matter. Just give me the glass. I'll drink it, and then you can pour me Here, more you later. this one. I don't, Jesus Lord. I've already had a bunch. So I've, you, I've and you got this, drove? I've got the, no, not tonight. You know what I'm oh. saying? I've already had a bunch. I had like four last night. It's like a, it's a 5.7. It's a Danny DeVito. Um, <laughs> I guess no, it's I don't smaller. know. It, they sneak up on you. Believe me. Is, Christian, is this a Christian Bell? Is that what, I don't know. How tall is Christian Bell? Well, I mean, rel- relatively speaking, I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's Did like you say Kristen Bell or Christian Bale? Christian Bale. Okay. Yeah, B A L E. It might be a Christian no. side hug. I don't know. I mean, cause, yeah, no, I, get, I mean, it could they, also be a Kristen Bell. It's close enough. No, no Christian side hug. Six foot tall. Who's six foot tall? Christian Bale. Get out. Is he really? So a five seven. Yeah, I mean, right, well, then, well, how tall? How tall is uh, Vin Diesel? Maybe this is shorter. Vin Diesel. Definitely Ooh. shorter. He's. I don't like, know. I think he's like five nine. I was gonna say like five nine, five ten, probably. I mean, there's only one way to find out. <clears throat> now, if you had hair, if you- <laughs> oh, he's six foot two. Oh wow! What? Okay, really? He's six foot even. Yeah. I just embarrassed myself and a major actor. I am so sorry. Dude, why do I? I guess we I, won't be calling him out. <laughs> I don't feel like he's six foot tall. But Kevin Bacon, seriously, if you happen to catch this show, definitely. Kevin, ba- Kevin Bacon. It's all about mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon. It's all about Kevin Bacon because uh, he's a townie, man. What is that? It's a it's a 5 point what? 7. 5 point 7. We'll just call it a ludicrous because he's 5'8". There you go. Luda. That works for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to turn on the on air sign. And you pushed my button. So what button do I get to push? You already did by showing <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, this mother... You know, for real? That's it. I'm going to smell Johnson's underwear. <laughs> you just, you just, you just start staring at me like... Oh. 
<laughs> Thanks, Dick. Don't make it any more awkward. <laughs> So I was at the mall this weekend and I walked by Bath and Body Works and all I could think about was how Buffalo Bill got fired. <laughs> oh, I hope you make a mask, dude. No, he was helping put the lotion on people to show them how to properly moisturize. <laughs> but, but all he was selling was the cocoa butter. Yeah, dude, cocoa butter sells through the roof. Everything else, yeah. You really need to start having you sell more of the product line. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need you to get the cinnamon spice twenty seven pieces of flair. <laughs> you wanted the minimum to be twenty seven pieces of flair, then just I oh know it was thirty thirty six. No, that was a different number. <laughs> thirty seven pieces of flair. It was somehow outlandish. It was like twice the amount, and then some. Yeah, I don't know how many pieces of flair in the office space. That's a good question. Well, the required pieces I think was fifteen. And she had exactly 15. And he's like, well, you know, here we really like you to express yourself. So, yeah, you know, well, Brian. 37. 37, 37 pieces was, of flares, what Brian had. Yeah. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. sure that was his name, Brian. Sounds like somebody's having a case of the Mondays. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> fucking guy. Punch him in the face. Smack him square in his So nostril. tell me what you think. I'll tell you nothing. Because I don't have to. Actually, no, you're right. It does. Um, it has more of a floral nose. That's for sure. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's because I mean, I, I feel like you were trying to make it more dank, so it's not very. It doesn't really have that like pungency to it. I haven't. That's the but the Kvike yeast makes an interesting twist to to any beer. I definitely like trying that for another IPA. But this yeah. is more like it's more like a a pale ale, really. But it, it, it does have some, it does have some of that, you know, piney back notes, but it gets kind of washed out. But I think by, by the, the effects of the yeast. To me, it almost has like a, uh, a Belgian wit kind of citrus to it. So it's got more of that weediness. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, well, the, the one place I read, it said it can give off like spicy orangey flavors. And another place I read, it said something about has like uh, tropical, like pineapple, mango, guava type. But it's it's definitely a, a fruity, florally. That sounds delicious. It's good, but it's he's just saying it. I wouldn't necessarily qualify as a dank. So I'm still I'm still dialing it in, but this is definitely a good beer. <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll agree with you. It's very drinkable, um, but I don't I don't think it's an appropriate iteration of Johnson's underwear. So I should rename it? Well, no, you just need to keep messing with the recipe and use this as something else. Cause I mean, this is pretty solid. You know, like, I, I agree. It's a little bit closer to more of that pale ale, but with like a, a Belgian wit kind of a vibe to it. So, and I mean, at five, seven, it's um, for a Belgian wit. It's a the, solid drinker. The carbonation is good, but the, um, it should have a, a heavier mouth feel. If you should have a heavier mouthfeel, hey, well. which is usually achieved by um, using wheat. I have no response to that because it's it is a wheat beer. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, this is this is a barley beer. You're a barley beer. This is a barley beer. You're a barley beer. This you're in the glass. I'm looking at yeah. You're in the glass. <laughs> 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 you can do that to anything. You pretty much, pretty much, bro. It's just not fair. It's like that's what he said or that's what she said. <laughs> you can you can almost always add that to anything. It's like, you know, fortune cookie. You read it and then add in bed. And then you will have the most greatest fortune <laughs> in bed. And then then you read another fortune cookie and add in bed. And then <laughs> And then you read a third fortune cookie in bed. Then you read all of the fortune cookies in bed, and then you're just filled with crumbs. And then... Then you get the raid to kill all the ants from all the fortune cookies that you were eating in bed. And then... And then you are dead because you live in bed <laughs> with bug killer in it. And there is no more. Mm. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous. <sighs> what were you even talking about? Nothing. We were talking about Johnson's underwear. 
Yeah, which shouldn't be Johnson's underwear. And how it's not dank enough. No, it's not. It does not smell like there's weed in it. It's still a great beer name, though. I definitely have to get this dialed in for... You should really mute yourself when you do that. But I think I should find a new name for this one. <laughs> She's just like, oh. You either like, oh, I gotta pee. <laughs> I'm just gonna be like Reese. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sorry. Right. Hey, right. Yeah. Make it juicy. I'll make I make I make I make this mic juicy, babe. <laughs> Gotta make this mic juicy. Absolutely. You have to hang it up before you put I'm it back say, in the box. I'm gonna ring this thing out. Just leave it in its pile of its Be own. Let it air dry for like twenty minutes. Air hour. dry air dry that shit. <laughs> yeah, then then wax it wax it. Wax yeah. Take it to the car wash and <laughs> Sorry, I would very much would like to be your assistant. <laughs> and do fucking cow pen. Uh, was it? Um, not Val. Uh, Van Wilder. Van there you go. I was almost like Val Kilmer. I was like, that's not the right Val. <laughs> it's it's Van. Van. Yeah, V. I was off by one letter. Damn you, dyslexia. <laughs> <sighs> Call me nuts, Timmy. Uh, my name's Brian. I don't know. I forget what the kid's name is. All right, Bobby. Hey there, Frank. Oh. Ricky Bobby? <laughs> Ricky Booby. <laughs> <laughs> I just flash back to the, the French speaking part that you just showed me of oh, you're right. <laughs> Super Troopers too. Dude, I know. Oh my God. That shit is so freaking hilarious. <laughs> Oh, man. This would be like the third time we've talked about it recently. Which cracks me up because OG Series 1 used to do nothing but give me shit about how much I quoted Super Troopers. <laughs> and now you bring it up. It is, it is one of my favorite movies. It worked. I did it. Ha! I which, got you. <laughs> which <laughs> <laughs> see, see how that works? I mean, so, you know. But yeah, I just, I'm just uh, now thinking that I haven't watched um, Bulletproof in a while, too. In a long while. Mm. I'm due. Normally, I watch that at, you know faithfully like once a year, and I think it's been over a year. Yeah, but see, I haven't watched it this year that I recall. Definitely watched it last year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely last definitely. year. Definitely. Very good driver. <gasps> Excuse me. But yeah, that's... At least I did it off mic, punk. Gotta watch that one. You should really mute yourself before you do that. I didn't have to. I went off mic with it. <sighs> Ha 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 ha! <laughs> 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 that was a fake laugh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking Ed Helms, man, cracks me up. He is funny. Yeah, I just I like it in uh, the second Hangover when they're like going down the river. And he's like, so I'm sitting here in Allentown. Because, you know, Alan's the guy that keeps messing shit up. <laughs> so he's just like, here I am back in Allentown. Like, eh. uh, he's actually a really good musician, I think. I mean, as far as like his, like, I don't think he makes his own stuff, but he plays and sings. And you know, I think he's a solid artist beyond acting. So uh, about that, um, that video. Bro, I couldn't so watch it. it. Robert. E, I started to name? that was being May or Hey um, um Aubrey Marcus. It stopped show. on my screen. The Aubrey Aubrey it, podcast thing that you sent. I mean, I got the like the yeah, first twenty. It's Aubrey Marcus. Minutes. Yeah, it's like two and a half hours long. It's, yeah, it's a long one, but yeah, I just I couldn't I couldn't get dude, to it yet. So I could I wanted I started taking notes and I just gave up after a while because it was just like. So much of their content was was stuff that we brought up like in the early season of our show. Like, well, I liked how in the first twenty minutes uh, they kind of touched on the idea of like the fifth dimension idea, um, and and how Aubrey was trying to explain what different frequencies are and like how it is to resonate on them. And it right. just to me, it sounded very much like the the fifth dimension idea that uh, KRS One was we were doing the other week, but. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but he was talking about that same stuff about, you know, um, raising your vibration. And I mean, the conversation, I ended up listening to all of that one and listening to another one that was uh, specifically on the pyramids. And I think they mentioned it throughout that episode. So I ended up watching that one too. So I might get confused, like all the oh, stuff that oh, was gotcha, brought up. Gotcha. But, but there was, um, 
there was a lot, Edward Grant, Robert Edward Grant. Dude, look, he's just like you. He literally has notes over here. Um, what? But they, they started off, it, the, the topic was supposed to be um, the, yeah. her, the hermetic principles. The, you know, you yeah, gotta, I gotta turn this. There you like go. That. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, good job, little buddy. You're getting so good at that. But yeah, the, the seven hermetic principles, and now I'm gonna be totally idiotic because I won't remember all of them. But the one that we have a fact checker. Yeah, we do. I watched both <laughs> today too. And and she's actually purchasing like all of all of the books within the contents uh, context <gasps> of the. Do you remember when people used to read books? Oh man! Oh my god! It is. It is. Wrong one. There we go. <laughs> it is a dying art form. You shut your mouth. <laughs> I mean, every, you know, there's plenty of people I think that, that read and read for strictly for entertainment, which is fine too. But a lot of people don't even read books anymore. I feel like I, I, I feel like it's a limited amount of time. Like, I feel like I have to go out and buy a book every week or something. Just so like one day when they're gone completely, I still have books Print is dead. That's very fascinating. You say some very fascinating thing. <laughs> Ghostbusters? Anyone? Anyone? I mean, I get that. <laughs> I can, but at the same time, it still feels like a stab in the back. I'm just saying. Dude, I was actually talking with my, uh, my buddy today about that is... I don't, I don't read for fun, even though when I read, I'm having fun because I read like dry academia and stuff. So I'm reading like it's not that it's not entertaining for you, but yeah, it's not yeah. it's not purely for amusement. Yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm <laughs> what am I a clown? <laughs> yeah, funny how yeah no I'm <laughs> literally attempting to gain knowledge of some sort. I mean honestly, anything I do, I attempt to do that. I mean that's what retrospect is for, and you know you learn your lessons and you can move past the things that you've chosen. And you know they say that's the easiest way to get through life is just to. The last book series I got seriously into that was just for entertainment was the Harry Dresden series. I love them. You have a Harry Dresden? <laughs> <laughs> um, hey but he was like a modern day wizard. You're a modern day wizard. I feel like I know this name. I've heard this name. It's it's an it's, I think for Is more this like along the lines of like Fantastic Beasts? Uh, different, a little darker. Um but amusing like there's it's it's kept on a level where it's it's there's always like a quick one-liner or joke or something like hidden within even the scariest part of the the story like pixar but it's not like it's i wouldn't say it's like super dark but it's like it's not cheesy you know surface stuff like it's it's interesting and like apparently the guy that what the heck is his name it's i want to say jim something you have to look it up for me. I feel like an idiot. But uh, <laughs> Jim Butcher, I believe is his name, um, apparently is is like kind of a, a renaissance man of, of when it comes to historical old age stuff. I guess that wouldn't be a renaissance man. It's kind of a, kind of a niche of his. Two guess. times, Mr. Rago. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yes, you know what I'm Great saying. Renaissance man, yeah, the movie. Ah, see, you got it, bro. I got it. Good job, they little call, buddy. They call him the author of contemporary fantasy. Yeah, it's it's. Well, I mean, it's magic. It's magic stuff. Like you know, contemporary fantasy sounds like a really dry, soft porn book. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not in the least. <laughs> I mean, it does to me. That's what. That's what it sounds like in my head. That's... But uh, the the the. the character the jim butcher like the vicar takes her to the orchard and they just actually stargaze like that would be really boring in this character harry dresden is it's, <laughs> it's, you're such a child i can't even i said i'm done such a jerk i gotta go to the bathroom i know i gotta go pee <laughs> what the <laughs> bro uh, but yeah no harry dresden <laughs> you can't just bring it back like that. What the hell? The fuck? I, this is green room. I'll do whatever I want. No, it's... it's fuck it, your couch. He, cre he created a character that's very lovable because he's flawed. I mean, aren't we all? So, Well, yeah. I mean, but it, like you can't take a character seriously if they seem... If you're only seeing like perfection in everything they do. It's like 
you see that like he stumbles a lot and like he has issues with this and that. And it's just funny. Like you get used to, you know what I'm saying? When you fall into a character, like you buy their new book and it's like, it's like curling up and hanging out with an old friend. When you, when you got a, a, a character that's developed like that the, and the, the character development between him and all of his, you know, whether adversaries or emissaries or excuse me, the, um, the writing and the dialogue, but also the content was interesting because he has Jim Butcher apparently has studied some occult stuff. Like he's really into that. So when he tells you stuff, it's like, it makes it, it makes it sound really, really believable what he's doing. Like and the magic and everything and how he's describing how it happens. And that there's a, a lot of interesting, I don't know, to me. But that was the last book series that I really got into reading just for um, entertainment. Before that, I think it was Stephen King, which I feel like you can only read about two Stephen King books in a row before you kind of have to take a, a King break. It's, it's a I lot. I feel dirty. It's I feel just, you. It's, it's a lot to take in because there's a lot of twists and turns. There's a lot of... There's a lot of connectivity with Stephen King's books to other books. Connectitude. Connectitude between all the different lines of stories that he's put together, that they all kind of intertwine. There's, there's something interesting about Stephen King in that way. Mm-hmm. Like he, he kind of quotes himself, if you will. That's what we do, bro. That's what I'm saying. He, Are you saying we're like Stephen King? Well, there's, uh, if you've ever really studied or read a lot of Stephen King, like there's there's cro- there's crossovers from of course from one story to another where yeah. it's it's like okay, how did Carrie just end up in this story which has nothing to do with you know what I mean like the same as like John Hughes, but it's like he was very much about that whole kind of multiverse thing even back then that that somehow you slip through a, a crack in this reality and end up somewhere else, you know, and he had a there was there was several different books or book series that were written around the same concept. So it's weird that he has like this this wheel of of his alternate reality that's somehow connected to all of these connected connected to <laughs> with all these different branches of like different storylines all together with different characters, yeah, yeah. you know, different realities, if you will different timelines. Yeah, there was a congruency. And it's always in Maine. <laughs> it's always. It's always in Maine. Well, yeah, that's dude, where he's from. Right. Yeah, same thing with like John Hughes. He was always talking about freaking. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, every, everything was in Illinois. That's why like the main city was pretty much probably Chicago or some shit. And, but yeah. Because they were like suburbs of. And people used to read books. Now they just read e-books. No, I still get books. Like I get literal paper. I, I, I it just I You're enjoy weird. I enjoy the experience of reading more when you get that do, yeah. page by page where you you just gotta f- you know flip it over. It's just like oh well, you can do that on the Nook. It's not the same. It's not the same. Not even the same. with even my makes, school manuals, I'll print them out as staples. Yeah, I like having a physical copy. Mm. Don't need batteries. This don't, is true. don't need an operating system. Just well, you know, the one in your head, really. <laughs> the like, ultimate like we used to system. do in the old days. Like if we researched a project, we actually had to go to the library and research the project. Oh yeah, man, you'd have to like use the Dewey Decimal System and shit. And do they even use that anymore? I mean, people who I hope so. I mean, there's still libraries out there, so <laughs> I would assume so. I mean, they probably do it via computer now so you don't have to go to like the file cabinets and find the right drawer. Oh, to find a book, yeah, it is mm-hmm. a lot easier in that sense. You don't have to go to the stupid file cards and flip it no. away. And probably all just put it into the, the search engine and it goes bing and it tells you the section and everything. You're like, cool. You just start walking. Right, that's exactly what you do. So boring. But that's why I'm saying I, f- I feel like they don't even use the categorization may be similar but I feel like for some reason they don't even use the Dewey Decimal System anymore. We got totally on a tangent. Yeah, they do. Do they? Okay. Yeah, even when you look up a book, it'll give you like the actual number where it is using the Dewey Decimal. So you know where to go find it. Yeah, I feel like I know where to go find it. Maybe it's, I feel like there's two different (laughs) systems in place at the same time. 
So that maybe it's like for people that haven't learned the Dewey Decimal System, which, <laughs> what is that quote I'm thinking of? What's that? Conan, the librarian. What was that, UHF? Oh, God. Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Dude, I'm just, my brain is picturing that. Dude, it's uh, It's been a couple of years since I've watched that, actually. Such a nerd. Yeah, I feel like I watched that like about two years ago. Because I was wow. like, man, I haven't seen this in a while. I was like, I need to rewatch this. I don't want to do my laundry. Yeah, I think I actually watched it twice. That's how dirty I am. What's up, bro? You got more beers? What the hell? I've got one more of these, yeah. Well, oh, are you ready? <laughs> we got empty glasses yeah. over here, homeboy. We're like halfway through almost. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, man. See, this is why I like my beers, because they're 16s. These are... This is, well... I didn't fill it all the way up, but you know, it's maybe. I heard that about you. <laughs> 14, 15, I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about how should, old it is? It should, well, it should probably be filled up to there, but it was. It's, <clears throat> it's really heady. I heard that about you too. Oh, it just sounded like a fart noise. <laughs> it's yeast farts, actually. It's yeast farts. Yeah, alcohol is, uh, you know, it's the poop. It is. It's the poop. Absolutely. And, and, and some the, of the carmination is from the, the from farts. the farts. <laughs> it's the poop and the farts. If you want to think of it that way, because it, it is it is a life form, right? I mean, I mean that would explain why some beers are shitty. It's fungus. Yeah. <laughs> why some beers are shitty? Uh, I was that was a solid number. There two. should be a warning, like a light that goes on when there's about to be a dad joke. Dude, that light would never it go would just off. Be like a strobe. <laughs> you gotta be like, what is going on? Is this the newest club? No, it's just dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, do you know? So this coming week's episode, well, so the um, the music okay. show I did, um, I get more this time anyway. I had a small section in the middle where I started with uh, Genesis. Uh, Genesis, I can't dance. Right. Yeah. And then it like rolls itself into uh, one foot in front of the other, which is like, how about, you know, open your eyes and you can dance and you can dance if you want to. And yeah. then it goes into safety dance from men with hats. Um, and then it goes to uh, falling, falling from. It's, um, it's truly think, like train of thought. Like yeah, you're, you're trying then, to live out a moment here. And then it goes into Cindy Lopper's, uh, if you are falling, I will catch you time after time. Yeah, like it's the connectitude. But I'm explaining <laughs> each track and the mentality of how I went through. So it was just like dad joke after dad joke. after. I was like, come on, I know. What else are you going to get from me here, people? Dude, I'm a one well, like a, a musical dad joke? Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. But, you know, consecutively. So there was like six in a row for the entire set. It was hilarious. I'm like laughing at myself so much because I can't. It's just, oh, bro. Oh, I've never. Salut. Natrobe. Slancha. Chin chin. Prost. Cheers. <laughs> Ready as the devil. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was from, trying to do Martian or something. I don't know. I was from Good Morning Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. I forget what record it is, but it's like whenever you play this record back, it's like, you're Freddy as the devil. It's just like, what? Yeah. What, what is but yeah, the... um. But the, you're just like staring at notes, bro. We're not going to celebrate reading right now. I mean, I try to catch anything that, that you guys send in the chat, and Jody's sending this really like hot shit, and I'm just like, I, I'm, I totally have to check that out. It took me like in, the entire day to fin finish it, but... It was like any time I had a moment, I was like listening to it. And it yeah, was just- I'm, I'm trying to recall, because I only, again, I only got like the first 20 or 30 minutes of it, but there was definitely quite a bit that each one was saying that not only made sense uh, for, the, for what they were doing, but also kind of like you were saying, things that we've already talked about. It, it, to me, it made those connections. Well, he, meant, he also mentioned polymaths. He mentioned by name, Walter Russell. He mentioned- um, well, remember I was telling you all the stuff about why well, it was the, the show was based on the Hermetic principles, right? So, who was Hermes Trismegistus? That was the question. Do you say that one more time? Hermes Trismegistus. It's like it means thrice great. <laughs> it's actually a reference to the Trinity. You're a Trinity. 
three, which is the magic number. And that's the magic number. It's, it's, everybody knows three is the magic number. It is. No, it's seven. Well, that that's... <laughs> no, it's five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, yeah. Yes, it is. I was testing you. It's just like... <laughs> A lot of their, uh, the beginning of their conversation, well, it kind of went back and forth, but... Um, was kind of revolving around the, the principles themselves and they were kind of unwrapping some of that, like, you know, um, and then they talked about like using in order to rise above the principles because anything you master that you're a master of, like it should no longer be an issue or an obstacle for you. Right. So the principles are there to help you so that you can, you're not changing the world around you. You're changing the world around you by changing within because it basically changes your perception, which is everything. Yeah, that's um, kind of reminds me of like what my uh, and this is why I love golf because I like I've, I've been I've explained it a couple of times where it's golf has allowed me to almost like culminate all these life lessons where shit just now makes more sense because I've simplified it in a in a way. And you know, because that to me that kind of comes down to the idea of like confidence. You know what I mean? Because it's um, me. My extension thereof has always been, whether as a manager or an owner, you know, or an elder, whether that's being, <clears throat> whether being an actual parent or whatever. But when when you when you're setting the example, your job is to teach others around you so well that you teach them to not need you anymore. You know, I mean, my my job as well that is your job to make yourself obsolete. Well, yeah, and I mean that's that's the uh, the adage is the purpose of a good leader is to make more good leaders. So the rules that have been brought to us, you know, these consistent ideas, if if they're truly good ideas, you know, or beliefs or thoughts or systems, then it should promote not needing them in a sense anymore because you would have transcended past that. And would have been on an even more enlightened idea or frequency or, you know, however you want to express it. So, I mean, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, the proper instruction is to teach you, you don't need shit from me. Because you should be able to go figure this out yourself. And then at that point, maybe even teach me. Um, oh, back, to the, back to the Hermes Trismegistus, which you made me say it again. Because it, it is, is like it saying is kind it. Of, it is kind of fun to say, I have to admit. But <clears throat> yeah, it's like when I could finally say, um, uh, "Was it Kamakawi uh, Ole?" Because dude, that's you. I practiced. I had to practice that shit. Kama chameleon, what? It's um, the uh, the one singer. Um, he goes by uh, is it's Israel uh, Kamakawi Ole? Oh yes, is how you pronounce that's his last mouthful. name. Yeah, K A W A K O L O. D. Uh, w e, it's like a whole yeah. e. It's like a whole paragraph in Hawaiian. I basically, oh god, I forget. Yeah, I just I messed up the spelling, but I was pretty close. I know I was. It's better than I've. Yeah, but I didn't even attempt. I was going to say I couldn't even attempt to pronounce nor spell that. I looked at that word and I was like, I have no. Yeah, well, that's uh, I S R E A L space K A M A K, and then it would just fill it in the rest for you, but. Hmm. Yeah, Kamakawa Wiyawale. Yeah, you lost me at K something. I had no idea what happened. You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> Is this elevator empty? Can I come a comma chameleon? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I come on over? <laughs> what the hell? I don't know what's going on. When you just said that, I was like, what? Did, did he just say that? I'm sorry, did I stutter? So this... um. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? See, there you go. Yeah, I was close though, huh? Wasn't I? I was like off by like two or it's, three letters. It's a crazy name. Yeah, he's, he was... I, can, I think I might actually be able to say this. Hold <gasps> on. Do you all want to hear this shit? Do it. Do it. Unless it's got Kama R's in it. Ole. Kama Ka Ole. Ready? Kama Ka Ole. Kama Ka Ole. Ole. It's like you got a new way. You got a new way. Oh, wow. You gonna make fun of this dude? <laughs> Come on, man. He's no longer, bro. Have some respect. 
Yeah. But yeah, you got to, it's almost like the, um, the double R in Spanish in a sense. You got to, you got to like, yeah, it's like. You got to roll it. Yeah. And then you got to, it's almost like a double same syllable and then continue on with it. Yeah. Kamaka o wiowale. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm wait. Come on. Let's hear it. I already said it like four times. <laughs> Kamaka wiowale. That's pretty good. That's very good. That sounded That's, just like what you said. But she said Kamaka yeah. wiole. Kamaka wiole. Uh, ole? Kamaka, Kamaka. <laughs> she said Kamaka. That, never mind. Kamaka wiole. Kamaka there you go. Can we just move on? I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Don't nobody near Nada like you near Nada. Kamaka, 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 Kamaka. Me. No. Yeah, not going to work here. Kamaka Melian. No. In the red and gold. No. Samir Nahin Najad. I mean, how hard it's is that your, to say? It's your fault. It's your, <laughs> it's your fault that I'm here. <laughs> what? Oh, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that freaking put a bluff out there and I called that <laughs> shit. So you put it back out and was like, fine. I was like, cool, let's do it. Well, I mean, I just. And then added a show. That's true. Yeah, now you're talking about like, yo, I need to get paid for this, bro. Let's make this happen. Dude, I'd like to get paid for something. It's just... You, <laughs> you mean more than uh, being on the corner? I get that. Well, you know, so some kind of art form that I enjoy. I mean, I like your art form. <laughs> you come here often? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just breathing heavy. <laughs> come on, because it's a prostitute. Coming here? No, I'm just breathing heavy. Come on. Where's, where's the dad joke like? That just made me think of Forrest Gump when the guy sits down after walking out of the house and goes, your mama sure cares about your education, whatever the line is. Yeah, and he yeah just your mama sure does care about your education. You don't talk much, do you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> it's priceless. What's that mean? Never mind. <laughs> Booty town. <laughs> what? Your mama sure cares about your education. Yeah, well, you know, that's not funny. You shouldn't laugh at that. So Hermes. Hermetic I was, principles. I was telling you this before that, that Hermes actually, one of his other, I don't want to say character roles, but like, so the, the guy, Robert Edward Grant, that was having this conversation with Aubrey was, was trying to tell him about where the, all this stuff came from and that it's it's kind of resurfaced after a long time and things are hidden for a reason so that people, you have to find it so that you have to find it because you got to work for that shit bro right because it's not worth anything to you if you don't have to work for it i mean that's the way i think of it like why would you I bother would, looking into this you could just stick with one book and for your entire life you know what i'm saying but that's not the way i think you know See, and I would I would uh, agree with you, but I would extend it to the idea of if you did just have it handed to you, you wouldn't either. It would either you wouldn't have enough appreciation for it to respect it properly, or you wouldn't be in a place where you understand it to know what to do with it at that point. You know, it's like if somebody just comes along when you're eight years old and says, "Here's fifty million dollars, go live your life." You're gonna be like, "What the fuck? You don't know what you're, you're gonna be buying candy and dumb shit." You know, but then all of a sudden, if you're like 50 years old and somebody's like, yo, here's 50 million, you're like, I bet I'm set. You know, you'd have that shit figured out. You know, so when you when you get a gift of knowledge or, you know, anything, any kind of possession, whether it's an well, I mean, idea or. I think of it just like, you know, somebody gets on a skateboard and they're doing something dumb. And you're like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but you got to do like, it. to. It's like they ain't going to listen to you. No, they got to. That's why you don't scream it. You just say, "I wouldn't do that," uh. <laughs> and then just kind of sit there and hope that it doesn't actually happen. You see, and this is where I like the Matias to Stefano when he was talking about um, when his dad was coming back into his life and him being in this place. You would think that he would want to tell the world, like, "Hey, this is how you're supposed to live," and he's like, "That's not my job." He's like, my job is not to tell him. It's not. It's not for me to explain it to him. It's not for me to make him want to be a part of it. Like that's it not my work job. That way. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. That's if he problem. comes, yeah. If he comes to me and he asks me questions, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to answer them. But I'm going to answer that question. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to be like, this is, you know, because <sighs> I'm just going to 
well, he's, I'm going to lead by example. Right. And if he wants to discuss, if he wants to do this himself, that's on him. It is not my job to promote or push or that's why I would tell everybody, like I've always been, you know, Hey, you know, whether you're, you're a smoker or a drinker or a vegan or, you know, an atheist or do whatever your belief systems are, whatever your things are, if you're not hurting yourself or those around you, what do I give a shit about? You know, if you're hurting you or the people around you, now I got a problem because that's not being proper community. It's not being, you know, what's best for all of us. You know, some we should not be hurting ourselves or each other. So we need to promote being good to ourselves and one another. Yeah, if it doesn't, what is it? If it doesn't break my arm or, you know, steal from me or my wallet, whatever, something to that effect, 73%. <laughs> um, then it doesn't. Can we like call out Aubrey? And try and get him. I actually wrote him today. Oh, or, oh yeah. Yeah, I actually I actually wrote him to to reference um Phil Langdon because I said, you know, he would be Ooh. a really good guest because a lot of the stuff that I heard come up in conversation between him and Robert Grant were very similar lines of thought and and Phil's got his own opinions on all that. Because and I just kind of quickly mentioned the the experience of of the divine that he had and how that kind of like he sees all well that's what i said like in my really short note was that he kind of sees all religions as trying to explain the same thing that he went through which i feel is completely spot on if you actually listen to him it's one of those things that just it it just makes sense like just to say i can prove it you can't because most people have to. And they were talking. Like that, but. Well, they were talking about ascension and all that too. So, and how once you become a certain level of awareness, that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, because I watch both videos too. So I might be mixing up which one is from what. But when you reach this, um, the the knowledge and whatnot, like that's when you ascend, and that's the same lines as like what Phil was talking. Like once you've ascended, like you've opened your mind to like all of that knowledge. It's, it sounds to me like, um, Aubrey's been doing it with plant medicine. Yeah, he's, so uh, he's been, from what I understand, yeah. multiple, I don't, I don't want to call trips. that a, I don't want to call that a crutch, yeah. but In ketamine, yeah. Phil Langdon did thing. It completely drug free. Yeah. But see, here's the thing. What the, the thing that I always say to you is it doesn't matter how you get to the mountain, as long as you're focused on that mountain. Yeah, whatever it is you think is the thing that's going to get you there, you need to focus on it. Because I mean, you know, Uwe's- yes, but, but the the only difference I would say is that Phil Langdon more than likely had a DMT trip that was self admitted within his own body, whereas um, I mean, it sounds like you can argue that, but I mean, and not that that's a negative thing. Yeah, I, would, I would love to try it one day, but it's just you know, hey man, I mean, it's dude, medicine. It's not a party drug. It's not. You know, so, it's been painted such a weird. But everything like, is medicine if you let it be. It's all right. about the mentality, right? To me, to me, that's always the definition. A drug is something that you use to numb you. Medicine is something you use to make you a better whatever, better entity. You know, better light, better love, better whatever. Just to be pure, more balanced, connected. Just being being the yeah. spirit that you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's and all these plant medicines are being used in psychotherapy and psycho uh, like uh, therapies for PTSDs, traumas, and like other things that most other therapies haven't been working with, but they've been significantly been helping. See, and I think part of that is almost like the placebo effect where people are coming in with the mindset that, hey, I've already heard so many good positive things about this. I mean, because think about a pharmaculture. Well, there is something to be said about the placebo effect, but well, that, well, but, yeah. Because the thing is, is there's plenty of people out there when it comes to pharmaculture are going to tell you there's good stuff to it, but then you also hear about all these side effects and everything. So it's like you're already going into it with like, all right, cool, it might help, but it's probably going to hurt elsewhere. Whereas the perception is now becoming with the, you know, all the plant medicine is. Because, I mean, you still get, you know, like leaking butthole and stuff, you know, <laughs> may cause vomiting or headaches and, 
<laughs> so there's, well, yeah, there's still side effects. However, they say it in this really quiet, really fast voice, like right at the end of the commercial. Yeah, but think about this with plant medicine. And then, like, nobody, everything you named is worse than what this is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I said pharmaculture has that double edged sword coming into it. Yeah, it's going to be good. But, however, plant mm-hmm. medicine, even though there's also same kind of ill side effects, people come right out and tell you, like, yeah, I almost pooped myself. It's cool. That's why there's a bucket next to me and stuff. And, <laughs> But, you know, it's like, hey, it was worth it because this is where I'm at. So there's there's already a greater sense of acceptance as well as willingness. So when you go into it, you're just like, I just, I, F it, man, let's do it. As I well mean, as usually if, you've going, if you're going to plant medicine, you've probably already tried pharmaculture. I just, I, I, so. I feel like all this stuff, I feel like we're stumbling over the answers that have been there for thousands of years. And what kind of oh, frustrates me is that it seems to me that that modern western medicine is are the last to find out basically trying to fix the symptoms without actually curing anything but well, they're not fixed they're, they're band-aids yeah it's literally just like sticking a band-aid on a freaking and it's it's not I wall. Say, it's I not that they're evil people but i think this is where you say the love the love of money Mm-hmm. is the root of all evil and that's where that comes from because it's it's your your main concern is the bottom line your main concern should be the health and welfare of every other person so it's like yeah. what like who are you kidding kind of thing like and that's where i was don't treat the symptom that's not going to help the symptoms there to let you know something's wrong agreed like if you have migraines all the time there's an imbalance somewhere that you need to find and locate and fix. Sometimes you can do it through meditation, non-invasive stuff. Sometimes that's all it takes. Massage, essential oils, right? Cool yoga. water, and that's where I agree. There's so much more. There's so much more to the mental than I, I think most people give their body credit for. I mean, because this is an amazing machine. It's the mental mm-hmm. that keeps it going. It's all mental. And that's that's the hermetic the first hermetic principle is all is mental. Like I mean, think about it. Mental mental. If nothing existed before this, and you believe in whatever the name is, you believe that God created everything. Yeah, like the Big Bang almost, but on a then theoretical level. Are you not or just theological a, level? Are you not just existing within the consciousness that is God? Right. Like all of this, every vibration that creates you, me, this table, these microphones, all of it is all just a vibration within the brain pan of the creator of everything. See, that's what I've always said. It's like, you know, matter, no matter what belief system you work within, when you say, oh, it came from this, it's like, all right, cool. Well, where'd that come from? Well, this came from that. It's like, all right, cool. Well, where'd that come from? And you can, where did that come from all the way down to like, literally. It's turtles all the way down, man. Dude, that's where, where, where is, what, what is like, dude, where is there was the a, legit 100% focal point of how all of this even came to be? Like, how is this even possible? You know, science and so math. With the and mind? These, well, with any of it, but it's like, you know, where did space come from? Where did these atoms come from? Where did molecules come from? You know, we, oh, we want to say it's this and that and that and these. And it's like, well, where did waveform comes from? Where do, You can give me all the, the amp, you know, answers and information you want, but where, where did it all come from? I mean, you, you literally go from a blank white piece of paper in a sense, but like completely open, empty nothingness that is all black or white or whatever. I don't, or what, is, you know, where did color come what is from? It, like, how do we even, you what know? What is it so that gives like, you solid mass? Is it not just a slower vibration than that around you? Yeah, but where did all that shit come from to even give you solid mass? That's, that's what I'm saying. Your like, perception of it. Is, no, that's, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, where is the original, hey, we came from nothing, literal zero. That is what I would call God. The zero point is is the creator. But, then where did that come from? What created the creator? <laughs> well, hold on. In in one of yeah. those videos, he had mentioned that there is a book or a creature, not a creature, but like there's a book or stories or something that were before God. Oh, um, like it was before Earth was created, or before like I think it was in the first one. 
Yeah, now I can't think about what it was. I know exactly what you're talking about, but now I can't I can't think about exactly what it was. I know exactly what you're talking about though. I remember that moment in the in the conversation. All right. So now okay, okay let's take it and say that. there's a book that created God. Well, what created that book? How did that book even come about? How did the atoms and the molecules to create that book even come from? You know like, where where did these gases come you from? You know what How I found was like, really interesting because listening specifically listening to Robert talk. So he was he was the guy that was that was in that entire conversation, both videos that I watched. And like the guy I would definitely consider him if he's not enlightened, he's getting damn close. But he considers himself a renaissance man, like a philosopher. But he studied the mathematics right, and, and all that, that goes, other stuff. Yeah, because it goes down to like the, um, when they were talking about philosophy and the study of, what is it, polymathematics or whatever it was? Well, polymath, or really, like Da Vinci was yeah. a polymath, yeah. Um, yeah, and it just meant that math didn't really mean like actual like, well, math, mathematics like was, it meant the study of everything. Mathematics is learning. Or right, was, and back was. then everything had to do with numbers. What's today's mathematics? No, mathematics was learning. Like that's what that's what he said. And then when Aristotle came along, he was like, "No, math is is numbers and sequences and this and that, but that's separate from the other sciences." Because uh, I don't know, he was ex- he was trying to explain that something about that that Aristotle was, but the the part that I really honed in on, which I thought was really interesting, because he he was talking about um, Ohm. You ever seen the the symbol Ooh. for Ohm? And Ohm is it's supposedly it's the, the sound that created the universe. It's the universal vibration, yeah. Right. And the the funny thing, did you remember the funny thing that he said about that? Like funny, haha. The numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, when you look at the symbol, it was a three six nine. So it's not it's not written in in Roman numerals, in, but there's there's an obvious Sanskrit. three, and then there's a Sanskrit six like up on its side above the three, and then there's an upside down or reversed nine next to the three. So it's literally three six nine. Is what is the sound that created the universe? All divisible by ohm. three. You ever seen the ohm? Like a lot of people have it tattooed on them somewhere. Yeah, it's like the omega sign almost. Right, but it looks it looks kind of no, like a three. It looks like a with three an on top. Dude, the ohm symbol and I'm, a dot on top. The ohm symbol. I'd I'm look used it up to, on my phone. Is shot. I don't know what the hell. The happened. ohm symbol I'm used to is for resistance. Oh, you're talking about like the omega. Oh, yeah. No, oh, but also the OHM ohm, which is electrical resistance. Yes, which is well. That's if they're trying to write it in English. It looks like a horseshoe. It looks like a horseshoe. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the omega. <laughs> But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, Ohm is in like the the Eastern mysticism Ohm, like right, like Indian philosophy. The belief is that whatever that represent that represents the sound that created the universe, Look. the the vibration, the tone. That yes, yes, that, I've seen that. That's Ohm. That's the Ohm symbol. Hmm. So it kind of looks like a three and sometimes you'll see it stylized a little different, but I I've never heard that before. And I think that's, that's so fascinating that basically you're representing mm-hmm. God as three, six and nine, which he immediately referenced Tesla. And I was like, dude, you guys have to watch this whole thing because the, the, it was chock full of stuff we've mentioned or even briefly brought up. And I can't remember if all of it was on mic or not, but I mean, he went through all of it, even like the 52 card playing deck and where that came from. And I told you that before. Yeah. That's actually a derivation of the, well, the Toth's tarot deck. Yeah. The, or the on original this tarot symbol, deck. On the ohm symbol, like the three, the top of the three indicates your conscious, your unconscious state. The bottom part of the three is your conscious state. The little dot on the top is your absolute state. Mm-hmm. The little swoosh under the dot in between the dot and the three is called your Maya. It's like the illusion. Yes. Um, and then the bottom part that like curves out, out of the side of the three is your dream state. Huh? 
So it encompasses everything in the cosmic vibration of the universe. So that's, that's actually describing several different dimensions of existence. Yeah. How many was that total? about it, right? Cause that's, yeah, well, that's your, that? that's your well, conscious brain. Well, I'm asking her like to literally count five. each one of those. That there's five. Okay. Five. Fifth dimension. Just saying. Well, but there's the, the conscious waking dimension. There's the con- consciousness within sleep. Your consciousness above. Which is your unconscious. Right. Well, yeah. You're, I, I don't have trouble with that term because you're not, when you're asleep, you're not actually unconscious. Like you might be actually super conscious because a lot of people go into alpha state while they sleep. Super. Seriously, <laughs> no. I just do the. Oh, I can't. I. I don't know where or what. But that's it's science. It's just speaking, subconsciously shut down. A deep sleeper subconsciously shut down. Yeah, and desiring nothing. Would you say supra conscious? <laughs> Sup like a supra. <laughs> I love those cars. <laughs> no, it's like supernatural, but it's like supra supra natural. natural? Yeah. It's more than super. Yeah, I think it's got a turbo. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I, I I have no comment. So, bro, the fascinating thing was he was talking about that the um, Hermes could even be more referred to as like basically a frequency pattern, and that he kept coming back throughout history. And I was saying Thoth which is kind of relative to the word thought, which he mentions, but yeah, I remember that part. That was um, right in the beginning. And what was Enoch, which I, I have actually read the book of Enoch. It's, it's one of, he was saying one of the Apocrypha, something that was taken out of the canonized Bible in what year was that? 300 something AD. Yeah. It was like 326 or something like that. The Nicene, whatever it was. Yeah, I really sound intelligent when I say that. Well, dude, so here's the thing the is... Council of Nicaea. This is uh, our, our one dude. The reason why he believes the Bible to like the nth degree where he's like, it's literal. He's like, you know how much research has been put into this? So many studies and considering yeah. things. Do you know how many versions there are? Well, and that's my and that was kind of my thing to him. I was like, so what you're telling me is it's just a bunch of people doing research and and you believe it. I was like, so if, if I were to write another book that was completely contradictory to it, so that a thousand years from now, if there was that much research put into it to prove that it was right, are you telling me then that would be correct and yours would now be wrong? Well, see, my my problem with that whole line of reasoning too is and, and I'm, I don't do this because I don't want to shoot holes. This is his thing, you know. Well, that, and that's and I my have thing to let it be because I wasn't trying to I tell him. him. I, and, yeah, I wasn't know. trying to tell him that he was wrong. I was just trying to ask him, hey, can't you open your mind a little bit and think that maybe that this book isn't a hundred percent accurate? You know, just like everything else in this world, because we know that we know nothing. Like, like so, you know, not not that you're wrong. I came to the but, realization watching this video that I really think I want to learn Hebrew. Because the first five books of the Bible are, are they're directly from Hebrew text. They're they're directly from from Judaism. Yeah. And to actually truly understand that, you have to read it in Hebrew because Hebrew, context, bro. Hebrew glyphs not only represent phonics, but they represent numbers as well. But phonics thoughts. It, there's there's a number of different derivations you can get from one line depending on how you place the letters. Right. Right. And it's. It's wild, but it's mathematics if you really think about it. Because what a great language. They mixed mathematics into the language, which kind of makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And that was another thing I gleaned from, from listening to, to uh, Robert, Robert Grant that uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen him or heard him reference, but had you ever heard of him before? No, not before I saw those two videos. He was fascinating, though. Fascinating. Fascinating. Just saying. Well, he used to be a big person. Where do you say he was a big uh, higher up at Bausch and Lom? Yeah, he, I mean, he'd mentioned something like that, and then, and then he got into the financial market, and he thought he was big ish, and he didn't actually. What I got from that conversation, though, was he didn't actually find happiness, his true wealth. 
until right. until he he kind of moved into his own company and started doing his own thing. And like the guy goes to meet the most interesting people as part of his job. I want that job. Right. Seriously? Like you get to go and have talks and talk to people that are all like basically the same wavelength as you. I mean, he got to meet and talk to the Dalai Lama. Hot shit, son. Like the Dalai Lama wanted to hear his opinion. Like how hot is that? Dope shit. Like, how do you not get humbled by something like that? You know what Bro, I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's that, just wild. I feel like that's what we're trying to do here. Like, that's this is absolutely our, what I've been trying to do my whole life since I yeah. was like 18. This is our attempt in life is to express ourselves to such a degree that we are completely open and willing to accept. That's why I said, dude, you know, talking to our bro, it's like, I, I'm not questioning you or your beliefs. I'm just asking you to say, hey, maybe even though I believe this, I can still believe that other things are possible. Does it, you know, that, that's why I go back to the idea of acceptance well, I don't and even, tolerance. I don't even have to go outside of that book per se, because truthfully, it's all there. But the thing is, I'm not even talking about that. It's written in code. You know what I'm saying? So it like to read, to read just on the surface level to me, isn't, isn't enough. Like I have to understand more than that. I don't know. Well, we're, yeah, we're, the, I'm sorry. And it's fucking green room. It is green room. Well, it'll continue. Yeah, I'm <laughs> fucking hot and bothered about shit. We're not supposed to talk about religion here, bro. We're really not, though. So it's right. not. It's spirituality. It's trying to understand. See, I wouldn't even say it's spirituality. I would say it's uh, all reality. We're trying to. It, it is reality. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I mean, just work, doing work on yourself, doing the great work. I mean, that's what I everybody. I work myself every night. <laughs> that's what everybody. And he, really quick, though, before we go on this reality thing, he's also creating the game that's the, with the Oculus into an alternate reality where you can view and understand different perspectives of situations other than your own to teach people how to understand other people's perspective, to open their hearts to a, a deeper connection with all of humanity yeah, and create a better really Interesting. It sounded much better than, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to go off his space for a minute. <laughs> it's, you know, like a mat with conclusions written on it that you could jump to. Yeah. <laughs> I went there. What would you say you do? <laughs> I already told you I'm a people person. I'm really, this conversation does continue forever and ever. And if you want to be a part of it, please reach out to us. Um, ITY at directionsinmusic.org or G-E-M-I-N-I at directionsinmusic.org or hit up Philly D, P-H-I-L-L-Y <laughs> at directionsinmusic.org. I gave you the D this time. You did. <gasps> uh, it was really nice having you. If you're still listening right now, I love you so much. <laughs> There it um, is. We love you all so we, hard. We love everyone that, that tunes in, even if it's for just like five minutes. We love everyone. Whether you listen or true. not, we love yeah. everyone. Everyone. It's be impeccable, bro. Even the ones that just are real. But anyway, bro, this has been another green room. Special. Bro, that we are all the same. We are all one. We all should love ourselves a, in all things. That was a big part of both of these videos. I've, I found very... Yeah, there is no such thing as assholes. There is only ways for me to very be, enlightened adjacent. There's two videos. Only <laughs> ways for me to be me, for me to be more part of what is going on around me, to be in that greater flow, to resonate on that level, so that I only see the good. You, you literally, the assholes are going to be there doing the pony dance. But bro, when you when you're on the right frequency, you only see the things that are a part of that view. That was that was another big part that I got out of his his talking too. Robert um, was was really cool about that. That he's like you you start to realize and reach a point where um, I know it's the end of the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking. I've well, you don't finish. You know what else? I'll you don't tell see you. things happening to you as being good or bad. You just see them as as these are actions, and and the world doesn't. It's, it's a change of perspective because the world doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Right. And like, what do you say? Like Rumi says, you're not a drop from the ocean. You are the ocean in a drop. I love that. Yeah. And we should close on that. <laughs> cool. Well, in that case, um, Green Room, Philly D. Mr. Gemini. Cookie Clack, I'm Mr. D.
Yeah, and uh, as always, fam, be good to yourself. Be good to everyone else. Much love. Peace. Peace. Peace.